You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. Uh, we've got a caller on the line. Caller? Yeah. Yeah. What, what you got for us? Well, you know, when I was listening to you guys talk about following the letter of the law that, that's been set down, uh, should it apply to everyone? You know, for half a second, I, I thought you were talking about illegal immigration until I heard you mention the court case. So do you guys feel the same way about illegal immigration that people should be following the law and if they're here illegally, they should be deported? Or are you selective in your outrage? Um, yeah. So I think that uh, following good laws are good and following bad laws are bad. And I think that's a general so move. So I think that this is a I think this is a general good principle that you you have you have a guiding compass of like what what do I think is good in the world and what do I think is bad in the world and I want to do good and I want to not do bad. But, well, what, the, but, but what I was pointing out what I was pointing out was not what I was saying was not like this abstract philosophical mandate that people must follow the law no matter what it says. I was pointing out that these textualist constitutionalist type people the people that say that this the abstract reading of the law and following the law is in and of itself a good they are not following that mandate when it comes to things that they are not concerned with does that make sense your co-host was actually very specific he said black letter law that's a very specific legal term the fact that people should follow the law that are on the books and basically just spit in the face of everybody who came to this country legally through the legal system versus people who have just crossed over willy-nilly and don't pay taxes like you're complaining about religious organizations or anything else. Well, so, that's, you know, that's, it's a that's kind of a misnomer there because most of the folks that do come here illegally, and I'll be, and I'll be the first to tell you, I do not support undocumented undocumented immigrants unlike my co-host here so we've got a, a very diverse uh host on this show so whenever well, i, I went so to say to say that they don't pay taxes is an absolute lie because most mm -hmm. of them that are here undocumented are using social security numbers to pay taxes on under somebody else's name so don't come on the show talking out yeah. both sides so of your wait mouth. a minute. Wait, wait, wait a second. So you're just saying that most undocumented workers, right, are using somebody else's social security number to pay taxes. No, I would no, love no, to no. know the research. I would love to know the research behind that, because if they're undocumented and then they're committing fraud on top of it by using someone else's social security number, I'm sure your research is very accurate regarding that, right? Go out there and yeah. look. I yeah, mean, it's I mean, all, these, all over the place. This, they have look. this thing That's called uh, yeah, an end of, in I-10, an individual taxpayer identification number. That's not a social security number, and they pay taxes uh, through that. You know, I'm sure that there are some people that are paying taxes. Like, uh, you know, like we're, I'm not saying that, like, things don't happen. I'm sure that there are uh, folks that are undocumented that say that, that like, use a, another person's social security number and pay taxes through that, which is like, you know, oh, no, they're paying taxes in somebody else's name. What a bad, you know, like, what a bad thing. But but most of them, they're, they're in I-10. I-T-I-N. That's how a lot of undocumented immigrants, they pay taxes, and um, and especially DACA folks. Like, DACA folks are integrated into the system, and they pay taxes, and they do everything else that you and I do. But these people that – undocumented immigrants that have I-10s, DACA folks, they don't get any of the benefits – or, or most of the benefits that you and I get. They can't access Social Security. They can't access Medicare. Um, and the point is, these what, what Jacob was saying and what I believe in and what I'm saying is, the people that believe to follow the strict letter of the law, the constitutionalists out there, are mm -hmm. carving out exceptions for people that they prefer, mm -hmm. just like the left is, and I'll be completely honest with you, just like the left is, but the difference is the right is doing it under the guise of the left is doing all this and we're trying to protect the constitution when the fact of the matter is they're just as terrible as the left is about it they have right. their pet projects they want to carve the law out for the left has their pet projects they want to carve the law out for they're both two-faced so so, so basically you're talking about a religious organization that is exempted from taxes because they're a religious organization right Mm -hmm. And you don't like the fact 
that according to their religious beliefs, um, they don't believe in abortion, contraception, whatever. No, it was con- that it was con- they should be. We're, we're coming up on a break. I, yeah, we're coming up up on, up on a break. I'm sorry. Um, we'll uh, we'll address some of that on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. This is uh, the Valley Labor Report. Good morning, Tennessee Valley. This is the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison, here with my co-host, David Story. Charles, we lost you. I'm sorry, that was our fault. We're still getting a hold of this phone system. If you want to call back, the number is 1-866-494-WVNN. When we were leaving, um, the fellow that we were talking to um, was like, uh, you you don't want... um, you don't like that religious organizations are like exempt from following their religious convictions or whatever and not funding uh, abortion. Well, this is not a and religious like, organization. Yeah. This is they may be under the guise of a religious organization, but when you're an employer, yeah. when you employ <laughs> people, employer. you're an employer. Yeah. And and, and well and, and and they're not being asked to fund abortion. Little Sisters of the Poor were actually not even asked to f- uh to fund birth control yeah, and Charles? um Okay, uh, I it's like it, it, it's incredibly important that like, no, 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 and, no. and with the ministerial exception, no, we, we do not um, like w- th- these people. D- okay, so the argument was that oh, religious organizations ought to be able to um, follow their religious convictions yeah, and yeah, whatever, yeah, and like yeah, we agreed cool. with that, yeah, right? Yeah, like people yeah. that are actual on, ministers in the faith, like. No one reckons that you ought to have to hire a Christian to be a uh, to be an imam at a mosque. Like no one reckons that. Like that's not a thing that people think. What we think is that if you are a teacher or an employee in a school system, especially that is tax exempt and is now getting access to taxpayer subsidies and grants and all that kind of stuff, we reckon you ought to be a you ought to have to. Fo- Follow the Civil Rights Act. We we reckon you ought to have to uh, afford your employees uh, civil rights. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We appreciate your time today. Uh, if you want to see what we're up to throughout the week, get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R A D I C L Unionist. If you miss part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. Uh, You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments throughout the week. And if you appreciate our work and want to help keep us on the air, consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report.